So we, we are done with the activity ratio. We have discussed the liquidity ratio. We have also discussed the solvency ratio. So last is basically the profitability ratio or the profits of the company could be found out using various tools and techniques. One of them which we have already applied when we had done the common size statement on the income statement. So I'll just revisit that and take forward different other ratios as well. So starting with uh, the income statement, we had sales uh, and we had the cost of goods sold. So what we had was the gross profit. Then we had the operating expenses or SGNA. So we calculated the EBIT. Now, after calculating the EBIT, the other expense was the interest expense. And then we had calculated earnings before taxes. And then we had taxes. So we got the net income. Now, calculating the profitability measures can be done at various intervals. You can actually calculate something called gross profit margins or GP margins. You can also look at EBIT earnings before interest in taxes or operating profit margins. We'll call this as operating profit margin. The earnings before taxes. So this was basically pre-tax margin. And the net income level, this is called as the profit margins. So what will be the formulas associated with this margins? We have actually looked at the vertical analysis where we had divided each individual item by sales. So margins here would be again gross profit divided by sales. Operating profit will be EBIT divided by sales. Pre-tax margins EBT divided by sales. And the profit margins would be obviously net income divided by sales. So obviously higher number the better it is for uh, the company to kind of demonstrate their strength in their core operations. So we have already discussed this in the vertical analysis. There are other set of ratios which also become equally important. They are as follows. Something called return on assets, ROA. The return on assets is, you know, crudely defined as net income divided by your average total assets. So we are essentially trying to find out what is the return on total assets. However, when we look at this formula, what is net income? Net income is the return to the shareholders equity guys. What is the total average assets? Total average assets are basically contributed by the debt holders as well as the equity holders which are shareholders. So this is a pre-debt and a pre-equity measure. However, when we are looking at the numerator, this is only defining the contribution towards the shareholders side, which is the equity side. So this formula is essentially a bit flawed. In fact, the updated formula for return on assets should be your net income plus the advantage associated with the interest that you pay. So you need to add back the interest. And uh, since you are paying taxes on interest, you need to add back 1 minus T. So net income plus interest into 1 minus T divided by your average total assets. This gives you how much the company is making in terms of return per unit of its assets. So obviously higher the number, the better it is for the company. So let's look at other set of profitability ratio. Operating return on assets. So as the word suggests, operating return. So operating return, as we understand, is operating income. And we call this as earnings before interest and taxes, EBIT or operating income. And since it is a return on assets, we'll take the average total assets here. So this will define what is the operating return on total assets. Now, one more important thing that you must understand is that when we talk about ratios, some ratios become very confusing uh, because we are using those with different names. So say, for example, when we talk about total assets, total assets is nothing but the total capital that is invested in the company. So I mean, if we just go back and look at uh, our balance sheet, 
we know that asset side will give us the total assets so this is the total asset we are talking about and when we say there is a total capital then we are saying that okay this assets would be financed or funded by various debt securities and equity securities so the sum total will be actually equal to the total liabilities and this is also called as total capital so if we change this definition of operating return on assets to let's say um, return on total capital now how will you modify your formula now think about total capital total capital is basically comprises of debt and equity so in the numerator when we are looking at return on total assets what are the return that accrues both to the debt and the equity holders obviously this will be earnings before interest and taxes it should not be after interest because we are considering the total capital in the denominator so EBIT will be the true measure on return on total capital for the numerator and at the denominator we'll have the average total capital and if you look at this definition with the one which we have discussed earlier both of them are actually same but we are referring the first one as return on total assets and the second one as return on total capital so please um, understand that this is uh, slightly confusing here because total capital and total assets or total liabilities these are one of the same thing now let's move forward and look at other set of returns which is only limited to the equity holders so we'll define this as return on equity now this is also known as ROE this is very famous among analysts they actually would like to calculate the what is the return on total equity so this is defined as net income because this is what accrues to the equity holders and in the denominator we'll have the average total equity so obviously if in the numerator this thing accrues only to the equity holders in the denominator this will be average total equity now many a times we have also seen that um, there is preference shares in the capital structure so if there are preference shares in the capital structure and if we want to calculate the return on equity which accrues only to the common shareholders now uh, please understand I'm only trying to calculate ROE which accrues to the common shareholders assuming that there are preference shares within the firm the slight modification here would be in this formula which says net income minus your preferred dividends this is what we have seen earlier while we had calculated EPS so I hope you get the same analogy here and when we talk about total equity in the first case we would actually modify this and say average common equity so only that portion which accrues to the common shareholders will be considered as ROE for the common shareholders so remember there's a slight tweak and uh, you must take into consideration the preferred dividends which needs to be subtracted from this